Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I've got two special treats for you today. The first one is we're going to do a little science. We're going to learn about something called the Utvos effect. And the second is we're going to see the reaction of the science denial community to the Utvos effect. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now, whenever you make a logical argument, you have certain things that you set as givens at the beginning of the logical argument. Now, we're going to set the following as given. The Earth is a sphere of radius 3959. It rotates from west to east, and gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, a term that we need to define is something called centrifugal force. Now, centrifugal force is what's called a fictitious force in that if you stop the rotation, it no longer exists. However, it's defined very clearly, and that is that centrifugal force equals the mass times the rotational velocity squared times the radius of that rotation. Now, another term that we have to define is weight. Weight equals the mass times the force of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, minus the centrifugal force. Now let's talk about what the Utvos effect is. The Utvos effect says that when you are an object stationary on the surface of the Earth, right here, you have two forces acting on you that determine your weight. The first force is the force of gravity pulling you downwards. The second force is centrifugal force pulling you upwards because there is a baseline rotational speed of the Earth. And again, it goes from west to east. Now what the Utvos effect is, is that if you travel from west to east with rotation, the centrifugal force will increase, and that you can see right here. So here is, you're increasing the rotational speed, and since weight of an object is mass times gravity minus the centrifugal force, what will happen to your weight? Weight will go down. Likewise, if you travel from east to west in this direction, what you're doing is that you are decreasing the rotational speed, and as a result, you are decreasing the centrifugal force, so you are subtracting less centrifugal force from the force of gravity times the mass, and your weight will increase. Now we can design an experiment to test this. Now mind you, we are not testing the radius of the Earth. We are not testing the shape of the Earth, and we are not testing the baseline rotational velocity of the Earth. What we are testing for is, does weight change from a stationary position to moving to the east versus moving to the west? And this is a direct test of the Utvos effect. Now, being a good science communicator, I wanted to do some of these tests myself. And I've actually tried to test the Utvos effect in the past. Unfortunately, my planning wasn't as good as it could have been. Uh, that and airline restrictions, of course, caused problems. So I had a scale that was a precision scale with a maximum capacity of 100 grams. I had a 100 gram reference mass that I weighed here in Michigan, and I calibrated the scale. So at the airport at Detroit Metro, on the runway in the aircraft, the scale measured 100 grams for this reference mass. I then flew from Detroit to Salt Lake City, and that would be going from east to west in the United States. And I didn't change my latitude very much during that flight. Unfortunately, because the capacity of the scale was 100 grams and I was using a 100 gram reference, the scale read high as I went towards Salt Lake City. I couldn't get a valid measurement. So that part of the test was a bust. I then flew from Salt Lake City 
down to Phoenix. And when I completed my business there, I recalibrated the scale at the airport to 100 grams. I got on an aircraft and measured the reference mass at 100 grams. And then I flew back towards Detroit, which was east northeast from Phoenix, Arizona. Now, during that flight, I reweighed that reference mass several times, and it consistently came back at just over 99 grams. However, I didn't have enough confidence in the decrease in the mass to be able to really report it as a clear example of the Utvos effect. If I were to redo this, I would use a larger scale with a three kilogram capacity, and I would use a thousand gram reference mass. And I believe that I would be able to get a good measurement both going west and coming back east. However, in science, fortunately, other people tend to do the same thing. And we have an excellent example of this from Wolfie 6020. Now, what Wolfie did was he took a precision scale and a reference mass, calibrated it at the airport in Sydney, and then flew with it to the airport in Broome, Australia, which is west-northwest. And he measured the reference mass throughout the flight and then again on the return trip. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at that portion of his video and see how it demonstrates the Outfos effect. But just to summarize, the idea here is that if an aircraft is flying at 500 miles per hour across the ground and the Earth is rotating, it is actually moving around curvature faster when it is flying east than when it is flying west. And the result of the centrifugal force generated should be measurable. Objects should appear lighter when the aircraft is flying east compared to when it is flying west. That maybe rotating but, reference maybe but not according to the guy that just spoke a second ago called jonathan because he's saying no there is an effect it's just in the maths it's considered negligible yeah i'm just saying and when like you it. do the math using newtonian physics you don't account for a lot of things that you deem negligible like um how weight at different latitudes is different you don't you don't account for that you don't say oh at this latitude it's going to uh, be 0.5 newtons less straight. you've just thrown in the atmos effect right Yeah. I'm just throwing in things that I've seen. Atmos effect. You've seen that, have you? Just math that I've seen relating math. to Math? What about the effect? The, the Atmos effect, I don't know enough about to accurately speak you on. just claimed it. I only know enough about you just claimed it. I'm only talking about you just claimed things it. that I can accurately Hello? speak on. Hello? Now, did you see that little move that Nathan just pulled? Now, Jonathan, who is somebody that is a Globe proponent, came on his show and was talking about something rather devastating, and that is weight changes by latitude. That's something that I've demonstrated in a video myself. However, you see how Nathan steered the argument to the Utvos effect? Now, the Utvos effect was not Jonathan's argument, but Nathan wanted to sandbag him on it. So what he did was he kind of manipulated him in to mentioning the Utvos effect. Let's see where it goes from there. 25 seconds ago, you just claimed it. I just claimed, oh, because I've seen math relating to it. That's all I know. Right. Is that well, there is that so people no have Atmos accounted effect, for the effect and say, oh, this is what the difference would be. If there was an effect. Have you seen that effect to validate that is actually an effect? If I had the money to travel, I would. Is that a no? <laughs> a no. But do, do you that, get the basic? Sorry, the just basis need you to concede, saying, right? typical baller. Yes, so we'll try that once more. Do I need to slow down, or will you have the balls to concede? Do you get, do you get the basis of what I'm saying, though? Do you that get the basis of my annihilation of your claim of that, do, do you get it? That's do you think you need to ask I'm me saying. what I get and chant nonstop? 
do you get that I've, I've just I've, taken your I've plane? Made, I've, made, Shut I've up. made one Stop. real point in that Newtonian Stop. mechanics don't Stop account talking. for a lot of things. You're getting irritating real fast, Jonathan. You've asked me okay. why I stopped <laughs> talking. Hello? Oh, I'm irritated. Oh, I'm so concerned. And this topic of weight changes by latitude came up as an incidental finding. Nathan immediately tried to turn the conversation to the Utfos effect, which Jonathan apparently wasn't prepared to talk about because he's not all that familiar with it. Then Nathan's tactic is to immediately put Jonathan on the spot and on the defensive by saying, have you personally done it? Well. Jonathan, quite frankly, said, look, I've not traveled that much. I've not done this experiment myself, but others have. But you haven't personally done it. Then Nathan goes into his usual rant about your chanting through me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Jonathan <laughs> just isn't phased to his credit. Let's continue. You going to stop talking long enough for me to point out that which you've yet to concede, which is that your claim of et vos effect only exists in maths. That's not a valid effect that you can experience well, there in have any been, way. There, have there been he is again, done. triggered. Triggered us all hell, because obviously he's made a claim that's been annihilated by a flat earther and he's yet to concede. So he's going to chant straight through the middle of me reiterating it for the third time. Maybe he'll ask me what I need to concede at the end of this point that he's yet to concede about Ethos effect, which isn't real. You're going to concede it? <laughs> I just want to there are experiments that have been done. Do you want me to just do my own in order to prove it? Is that the only way? What's been done? Or can, am what's I allowed to trust other Sorry, what's experiments? Been done? We're still been claiming done. it then. Okay, what's been done to validate this effect? Uh, there's been an image posted in general a lot of a plane flying one direction and the other direction and the weight of an object measured with a graph on it. That's what I've seen on it. That, That's graph. an experiment? A graph? That is an a graph of something being measured on a plane as it moves direction. Does this sound like a naturally occurring phenomenon to you? Okay, so let's see if you're keeping up. What is Nathan doing now? First, he tried to put Jonathan on the spot by making him, quote unquote, concede a point when no point needs to be conceded. And then when he calls him on whether or not the experiment's actually been done, Jonathan says, look, yeah, I've got some evidence that an experiment like this has been done, and here is the data from it. You notice how Nathan then immediately changes directions. Now what he has to do is he has to say, is this a man-made phenomenon? Well, airplanes are made by men. It's not a supernatural phenomenon. Of course it's a natural phenomenon. Now, here's the problem that you run into with Nathan. Uh, there's two of them, actually, that we've seen so far. First, never let him restate your position. If he's unclear on your position, you restate it, because he will make a subtle change to your position, which he will then in turn use later against you. You restate your own position. Don't let him restate it. And second of all, Nathan is in no position to define science. Either is Quantum Eraser or any of these science-denying idiots. Don't let them define science. Nathan's trying to make the case now that unless you do the experiment yourself, it's not valid. And then when he presented an experiment that was done by somebody else, as I did with Wolfie's, he's now changing gears and saying, is an airplane a naturally occurring phenomenon? Does an airplane grow from seeds, perhaps? So this is an effort to deny actual evidence based on his interpretation of a definition of a scientific experiment. Don't let him do that either. And Jonathan, to his credit, is just not buying it. Well, yeah, the weight of the object Sorry, is you a think naturally occurring weighing phenomenon. Weighing stuff in planes is naturally occurring phenomena. You, you think that's natural? The weight of the object is natural, and then we can we could move it by hand and walk with it. Sorry, we could use to, a plane because slow down the effect the question, will be more you visible. You don't seem to understand. You seem to be answering in the positive no, because just saying, oh, a plane doesn't occur in nature is not valid reason to deny a scientific experiment. Well said, Jonathan. Well said. That is exactly the point that I'm making. Simply because it doesn't follow Nathan's artificial definition of what a scientific experiment is, in his opinion, doesn't make it not science and doesn't make it not an experiment. And you're calling him on it. Good for you. Uh, sorry, things, it's not things. science if it's not occurring in nature. It's not a naturally occurring phenomenon, so you're not going to be sciencing it. First step of the scientific method is to observe a naturally occurring phenomena. This isn't that. Etvos effect, it's not real. It only exists in your graph. 
Still yet to concede it. Fourth try. The graph is a measurement of weight, which would show the Edvars effect. Sorry, this is a back to the same point you've just ignored completely then. Not a naturally occurring phenomenon, my friend. Not something you've got scientific validity for. Nathan, what in the Sam hell are you talking about? Are you serious? Do you really think that this will fly with anybody other than your little echo chamber? No. Come on, man. Grow up. Just a man-made folly that you've attributed a graph to. Not a natural phenomena. Second attempt with that one. Still yet to concede my five attempts that Ekvos effect only exists in this graph. Well, no, it exists outside of the graph. The graph is just a measurement. Uh, what's the naturally phenomena that's occurred, please? Well, the Edvars effect would be the phenomena. Uh, where's we'd that observe observed? that happening. What's observed? And then we'd say, what causes yeah, What's observed? That? Don't just beg the question. The, the observation is the weight changing what observation? as the plane moves one direction. Yeah, that's not other. natural. You don't understand the word natural. You're thick. So Does I'll try the again. Object's weight I'll try again without you chanting straight through me. Weight? Yeah, triggered fundy. You're going to chant straight through me. Yeah, you've lost. Not a natural phenomena. Don't give me your man Do we made. add weight? We add Hello, he's going to chant straight through the middle because he's unreasonable and a globe believer. Yeah, maybe from the comments, ask why. Normally at this point, I get very irritated with this wanker. Yeah, he won't shut up because he's lost. He hasn't got a naturally occurring effect to justify his faith in a graph that details. Do I add weight? There he goes again unreasonable wanker he doesn't like my summary of his loss so mid-sentence he's gonna start chanting through me because that's what happens when you lose he doesn't have a natural phenomena to justify his faith in a graph based on men fiddling with scales in airplanes that's not a natural phenomena that's the third time my friend okay so basically what happened was nathan redefined science berated this caller for not following his definition of science. The caller ignored him, so that irritated Nathan. And now he's just simply declared victory. This is a classic pigeons playing chess scenario. So let's just kind of sum everything up. We learned a little bit about the Utfos effect, which is a fascinating thing that you can do while you're on an airplane doing a cross-country flight west to east or east to west. You can clearly demonstrate it, or you can look on YouTube for people like Wolfie6020 that fly on a regular basis and can do these types of experiments as, as a course of their day-to-day -day employment. Then we also looked at Nathan Oakley and his crew trying to overcome actual science by definition. So we've learned a couple of his techniques, and that is over-talking, berating people, trying to put them on the defensive, tried to redefine the criteria by which science observes things. You know, I, it absolutely amazes me that he would say, well, a couple of men fiddling with a scale in an airplane. Okay, what do you honestly think a scientific experiment is? Do you think a scientific experiment is one plant talking to another and seeing whether or not if one plant shades the other, the other one won't grow? Because otherwise, you're dealing with people conducting experiments to test predictions based on their hypothesis. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you found this enjoyable, and I'll see you again soon. Hey, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. We get a lot of people that watch these videos, but not all of them are subscribers to the channel. Now's your time to do it. Take care, guys. Bye.